Beloved compatriots, first of all, let me thank the movement against tyranny, Cebu, for inviting me to speak on the theme of peace and the prospects for justice and reforms, and to express warmest greetings of solidarity and the struggle for democracy against the tyranny of the Duterte regime. I admire you and salute you for your firm commitment. I congratulate you for all the successes that you have been that you have achieved in arousing, organizing, and mobilizing the broad masses of the people to fight for national and social liberation against tyranny. As a broad united front, the movement against tyranny seeks to fight for the national and democratic rights and interests of the toiling masses of workers and peasants, the middle strata, such as the urban petty bourgeoisie and middle bourgeoisie, and the anti-fascist sections and elements of the upper classes. The NAT bases itself on the consensus of the various patriotic and democratic forces that strive to stop the anti-national and anti-democratic policies and actions of the Duterte tyranny and to end the reign of terror and greed that seeks to perpetuate imperialist domination and the ruling system of big compradors landlords, and bureaucrat capitalists. The Duterte regime has sought to justify its tyranny, its ever-worsening use of state terrorism as something necessary to end the armed revolution of the people, which it maligns as communist terrorist. On this false ground, it has terminated the GRP and the FP peace negotiations and has proclaimed the nullification of all the agreements that have been made in these negotiations. It completely obscures the fact that millions of the Filipino people and their revolutionary forces, including the CPP and NPA and other formations allied with the NDFP, have invoked the sovereign right of the people to rise up against the intolerable ruling system of exploitation and oppression, and yet have agreed with the reactionary government of the Republic of the Philippines to engage in peace negotiations. The GRP and NDFP mutually signed and approved the Hague Joint Declaration of 1992 as the framework agreement for peace negotiations. It declares the aim of the peace negotiations, which is to address the roots of the armed conflict and arrive at comprehensive agreements on social, economic, and political reforms. It spells out national sovereignty, democracy, and social justice as the basic guiding principles of the negotiations. It sets forth the substantive agenda in the following sequence, respect for human rights and international humanitarian law, social and economic reforms, political and constitutional reforms, and end of hostilities and disposition of forces. It provides the methods of arriving at comprehensive and related agreements through reciprocal working committees under the direction of the GRP and NDFP negotiating panels, respectively. Since 1992, the Filipino people have nurtured the hope that the civil war between the revolutionary forces of the NDFP and the counter-revolutionary forces of the GRP be resolved through peace negotiations and that solutions of the social, economic, and political problems that have caused the civil war be agreed upon in order to lay the basis for a just and lasting peace. But there are forces behind and within the GRP that oppose serious peace negotiations with the NDFP in accordance with the Hague Joint Declaration and consent to such negotiations only as a means of outwitting and steering the NDFP to arch capitulation or at least paralyzing the armed revolution or even splitting it over time through protracted indefinite ceasefire agreements. Because of disruptive actions and extremely prolonged delays by the GRP, less than two years have actually been devoted to peace negotiations since 1992. It is a lie for the Duterte regime to claim that more than 25 years of peace negotiations have passed and yet these have not resulted in a final peace agreement to make the length of time for peace negotiations sound more ridiculous 
The regime claims that the peace negotiations had run for 30 years since the ceasefire negotiations of 1896 during the time of Aquino. We must recall that on the very first day after the signing of the Hague Joint Declaration on September 1, 1992, GRP President Ramos proclaimed the formation of the National Unification Commission for the purpose of localized peace negotiations, so-called, under the auspices of the Commission and Peace and Order Councils of the GRP between the reactionary military officers and their own military assets, and a few renegades masquerading as independent revolutionary armed groups. For two years, they tried to conjure the illusion that the revolutionary forces could be bought with paltry amounts of, and promises and were breaking up and surrendering in great number. Ramos agreed to allow the GRP representatives to engage in exploratory talks with the NDFP representatives only after he realized that the revolutionary forces had become more consolidated and stronger through the Second Great Rectification Movement. The formal opening of the peace negotiations between the GRP and NDFP negotiating panels could be held only on June 26, 1995. On this occasion, the joint agreement on the formation, sequence, and operationalization of the reciprocal working committees was signed. But after the formal opening, the peace negotiations was, were disrupted for one whole year because of the GRP refusal to release the NDFP consultant Sotero Llamas. There were still many more disruptions and delays which the GRP side was responsible for from 1996 to the end of the Ramos term in 1998. During their meetings, however, the GRP and NDFP panels were able to forge several important agreements. The most important of these agreements was the Comprehensive Agreement on Respect for Human Rights and International Humanitarian Law, or the CARIL, in compliance with the first item of the substantive agenda. The CARIL was forged by the negotiating panels and six months of concentrated work and was signed by the panels on March 16, 1998. Then the NDFP chairman signed it promptly, but GRP President Ramos failed to sign it. The newly elected GRP President Estrada signed it on August 7, 1998, but on May 31, 1999, the GRP issued its formal notice of termination of peace negotiations. The termination took effect on July 1, 1999, and did not resume while Estrada was in power up to January 2001. The peace negotiations resumed on April 27, 2001, during the Arroyo regime. Both parties affirmed as valid and binding all bilateral agreements entered into since the 1992 The Hague Joint Declaration. The Royal Norwegian government was accepted by both parties as third party facilitator in the GRP and NDFP peace negotiations. But the second round of formal talks in Oslo, Norway, from June 10 to 13, 2001, was recessed by the GRP by citing as cause the death of a notorious Marcos period torturer who resisted arrest by the NPA. From then on, the Arroyo regime sought to make peace negotiations impossible by requesting the U.S. government to designate as terrorist the CPP, NPA, and myself as terrorists. Use such designation as lever demanding the capitulation of the revolutionary movement of the people and reduce negotiations to disarming and demobilizing the revolutionary forces while keeping the indefinite suspension of the peace negotiations until the surrender of the NDRP. For more than nine years, there were no peace negotiations while Arroyo was in power. One year after assuming the GRP presidency, Benigno Aquino III agreed to the resumption of the peace negotiations in Oslo on June 18, 2011. No substantial agreement of any kind was made. The GRP side showed no interest in negotiating the substantive agenda. It focused on seeking to nullify the Hague Joint Declaration and described it as a document of perpetual division. It had the illusion that it could defeat the armed revolution 
through military operations on mere palliatives. It also refused to allow the release of the NDP consultants who remained in prison in violation of the joint agreement on safety and immunity guarantees. Despite the progressive background of some of its members, the GRP negotiating panel was controlled by clerical fascists and pro-U.S. military officers, especially at the level of the office of the presidential advisor on the peace process. If, together with the U.S. military officers, the Sokdem Norberto Gonzalez poisoned the peace negotiations during the time of Arroyo, so did the Sokdem Teresita Deles, together with the pro-U.S. military officers during the, the time of Noino Aquino. But the worst in the GRP and the FP peace negotiations would still come when someone like Duterte, who had first proclaimed himself as left and socialist, shortly thereafter would undertake the most vicious and most violent actions intended to kill the peace negotiations once and for all time. Before Duterte became president, he boasted of being close to the CPP, NPA, and NDFP. He shouted, long live the CPP and NPA every time he went to a guerrilla front in Mindanao to ingratiate himself with the revolutionary movement. And he wanted to be an NDFP consultant in peace negotiations. He was publicly advising the business entrepreneurs to pay their taxes to the people's revolutionary government. He proposed to release all political prisoners even before the resumption of peace negotiations. He pledged to make peace with the revolutionary movement of the people. As soon as he visited the first military camp after he became president in 2016, he began to differentiate his past as mayor of Davao City, whose political life depended on alliance with the revolutionary movement from his current office as chief executive of the entire ruling system in charge of all its coercive apparatuses and all the opportunities for plunder. At the exploratory talks in June 2016 to prepare for the first round of formal talks, it was already clear that he would not release all the political prisoners before the first round of formal talks in August 2016. So repetitiously he started his all-out war against the revolutionary movement under the guise of his uh, military minions continuing the Oplan Bayanihan of his predecessor Aquino. Like Estrada, Arroyo and Aquino, he gave himself six months to one year to pretend to be for peace negotiations in order to consolidate his position within the reactionary government and at the same time try to hoodwink the revolutionary movement. Despite these stumbling blocks, however, the NDAP negotiating panel persevered in pushing for the release of political prisoners in definite batches to facilitate the peace talks. The GRP and NDAP negotiating panels held the first and second rounds of formal talks in Oslo in August and October 2016. These were devoted mainly to the issue of realizing the promise of Duterte to release all political prisoners and to holding the initial meetings of the reciprocal working committees. And the first formal talks and agreement was made to carry out reciprocal unilateral ceasefire to demonstrate goodwill and promote the peace negotiations. This ran for almost five months from late September 2016 to the first week of February 2017. In the third round of talks in Rome in January, February 2017, and in the fourth round of talks in Northwijk Anze in April 2017, Duterte demanded protracted indefinite ceasefire and in effect the end of the people's revolutionary government by giving up vital functions of governance in exchange for a renewed promise of releasing all the political prisoners. The NDFP was firm with its stand that all the political prisoners must be released and the comprehensive agreement on social and economic reforms CASER, must be forged before there can be any agreement on any extended mutual ceasefire. To make credible his pretense at being serious in pursuing the substantive agenda of the peace negotiations, Duterte had appointed to the GRP negotiating panel persons respected by the NDFP as having an understanding of the national and democratic demands of the people. Thus, despite the maneuvers of Duterte and his pro-U.S. security cluster to push the NDFP to a position of capitulation, 
there was substantial progress made in the negotiations of social and economic reforms. But the fifth round of formal talks already poised to commence in May 2017 was aborted because the GRP demanded that the CPP Central Committee withdraw its call for intensifying the arms resistance in response to Duterte's proclamation of martial law to cover the entire entirety of Mindanao, despite the fact that those whom he assailed as Muslim terrorists who launched a military operation in Marawi City were located in just a few definite and limited areas. The proclamation, which invoked the Barawi siege only as pretext, was directed mainly against the revolutionary movement led by the CPP. The NDRP negotiating panel stood firm that it would not recommend the withdrawal of the call of the CPP Central Committee unless Duterte would first amend his martial law proclamation. Duterte refused to make the necessary amendment of his proclamation, even as GRP Defense Secretary Lorenzana made a press statement that the proclamation did not target the CPP and the NPA. Despite the impasse in the holding of the peace negotiation talks, due mainly to war hawks and the security cluster of the Duterte cabinet, the GRP negotiating panel was able to get permission from Duterte to engage in back-channel talks so that the negotiation and drafting of the CACER would proceed. Indeed, most of the CACER mutual draft, especially the most important sections on agrarian reform and rural development and national industrialization and economic development, were done by the reciprocal working committees and were ready for negotiation at the level of the negotiating panels. Ultimately, Duterte and the pro-U.S. retired and active military officers around him had their way. To discredit the peace negotiations in press statements, they harped on various lines like the peace negotiations had taken too long without any result, that the NPA was violating Caril as if there were no joint monitoring committee to receive complaints, and that it was best uh, to conduct lo so-called localized peace talks, a la NUC and at the same time escalate the all-out war against the CPP and NPA. Withdrawal from the GRP and the NPP's negotiations